So this is what I said in my letter to Regan, that uh, that when Rockefeller went to China, mm -hmm. he said, how else would you run a multitude of people than by the means that they have now, namely communistic? That we would not have to be that afraid of it because we see that it can function. It's not ideal, but we'll have to consider that half the world is virtually communistic. We have to, yeah. we have to understand it, yeah. that it is. And we also have to understand that our own democratic alternative is a great paradox in comparison to what Jefferson with uh, Jefferson envisioned How the cost to be. It got to be that because it changed from an agricultural to an industrial mm -hmm. society. Yeah. We have to understand that. And I also said to the Russians that what Lenin foresaw was the withering away of the police state to something ideal. That's, that's what's, what's, what he, that was yeah. part of his but premise. Yeah. Part of his premise. Yeah. But and how we, do, how we do that is we must have, carry on a dialogue how we, both of us get to that state. And I think that that's the only way we, we can soundly proceed on to see that we are both striving to do something that will create a much better world and that we have got to try to harmonize the whole world by abolishing military force and having a police force that is international, that will deal with the terrorists. I, I see no alternative. And I don't see that you could offer anything better yeah. than that. But nothing less mm -hmm. will do it either. Really we, we have to do away with the military might. We, we cannot depend on that. We, we can't, nobody can afford to gamble the threat that the a mistake poses for us. You so this is this is what the result of my cogitations have been about our fix. And there was there was Churchill, who we have to uh, blame much of it on when he drew down the Iron Curtain. I was there when he came in New York and, and blew the Zion. He had just been to Fulton to do this thing. Mm -hmm. The next day. I was there when Lauren and I stood on 57th Street and saw his banner flying car carrying him through after he had done that. But what he said was, our problems have grown beyond us. I couldn't agree more with him. That's what it is. And unless we understand that the problems are beyond us, we are not going to make an alternative. If, unless we accept that. Oh, accept that. There's no question for you that this is something of great concern for an artist, for a performer. These, there are artists who don't concern themselves with that politically. Yeah. Yeah. But for you... Victor Borg, I know what he feels because, you know, his assistant was my assistant here at the university. Jim Collias. Do you know him? Well, he a, called... Yeah. A wonderful film. I don't know him, but he oh, you like to corresponded him. with yeah, him. You like to meet him. Yeah. He says that we don't have to be afraid of it because everybody is afraid of committing suicide. That's not quite true. We might be afraid of committing suicide, but the, the damn mechanism might commit suicide for us if they go awry. If they go awry. Or all, all these things that that we think we have a red button and, and this hotline that will prevent it. Mm -hmm. If we could depend on that, I would say yes, nobody is going to try no matter how desperate we did, we, we, can't, we know that we couldn't afford it. No, but it many be, people feel that. It could be a silly mistake. Yeah, exactly. No, exactly. I think to think that the red line, that's to really fool yourself, yeah. to, that, to think that that will yeah. save things. Yeah. Don't you think? Uh, yeah, I, I, we should bank on it. Yeah. If we could bank on that, I'd say well, you don't have to get that excited about it. Mm -hmm. If you mentioned a lecture by Niels Bohr yeah. about what we can learn from that, if yeah. you were to give a lecture called "What We Can Learn from Music," what would you say? That the the the, the, the if music isn't the idea of harmonious interaction, what is it? We have to deal with a lot of disharmony, 
but it has to be uh, strategically operated. Mm-hmm. We, we can't have it engulf us, mm-hmm. because then it, then it, has become, it doesn't mean anything anymore. We were, clo- we were close to getting there when they made the anarchy of, of Dodeca- Dodecaphony. There's no question about that. It, my ear doesn't want it. And Carl Nielsen, the healthy Dane, said that if you have lo- lost your innocence musically, so you can no longer react to an octave or a fifth or a fourth or a third, mm-hmm. you've lost your musical innocence. Are you uh, a little bit against I am against it when it does mean that you have lost your innocence, you can't react to a fifth your, anymore. Your equal that it has to be a ninth, a minor ninth, or a major seventh, when there is no such thing as in relaxation of the I- appeal of the intervals. Yeah. That they have always got to be the extreme. I can't see, I can't see you, you can play a game just a game, mm-hmm. leaving out the, the uh, top cards, mm-hmm. which is the octave and the fifth. <laughs> that you couldn't, you couldn't deny it. Pythagoras is the one who discovered that for us, mm-hmm. yes. if you want to deal with numbers. So that my, the, I've, I've written, written lots of music that could be called totikaphonic, but not without acoustic regard. I think that some someone like Scriabin, it was absolutely sane and sound mm-hmm. uh, acoustically, this music. Mm-hmm. With a sense of repose, sometimes tonal repose. Absolutely, absolutely. It has to be a, rel- a relative give. I mean, why, why was it that a Mozart and a Bach were, how did they operate the 12 notes after all Bach? was the first one to write 12 tone music. You know what it is? Uh, the, uh, no, we can't. Musikalische Opfer. Yeah, Musikalische yes, Opfer. for one. But he did it earlier than that when he wrote the well tempered clavier that can be wrote out about. Ah, in one of the B minor. Did the B minor? Yeah. That's when he has done everything he can do with it. Yes, when he has done everything he can do with it, yeah. then he has a theme that's a 12 tone theme. I mean, how, how incredibly skillful yeah. on, on his part. Now, now we have done all we can do the 12 tones. Now I'll tell you. Now we make a theme that has all 12 <laughs> tones. It's not the only time that he does it, because he has another 12 tone, and that's the F minor, the three boys invention. Da di da, da di da, and it has the ba da di da da, ba da di da, the inner inner voices, mm-hmm. and they are they are all 12 tones. That's interesting that you have observed that with the B minor, because I I have never read it by anybody. Now, do you play the? Did have you recorded the art of the flute? Absolutely, the Kunst der Flute. Oh yes, yeah. oh yes. I have also some amusing, interesting observations that would be interesting yeah, please, to you. Please, please, please. Yes, well, I mean, when you talk about a manual for contrapuntal uh, procedure, mm-hmm. how could you how could you forget Johann Joseph Fuchs? He's the one that wrote, you know, uh, the compendium. The compendium, yes. Yeah. He wrote the Gratus at Gratus at Parnassum mm. was Fuchs's before it was Clementi's, mm-hmm. isn't it? With Fuchs, it was the study that you had you had available for self tutelage of contrapuntal procedure. And how does it operate? By species. First, you have one against one, you have two against one, and so forth. Does Bach have anything to do with that? Yes, it does. He starts out with long notes to begin with and they uh, f- f- ever more and more become fragmented and smaller values, isn't it right? In the art of the few. In the art of the few. Yeah, in the, f- in the subject. In the subject. Yeah. It's just, and nobody has thought about that. So when, if there is any order, there's no talk about that it's complete. It was not complete. And he, uh, you know, if his manual says, and when he comes to the f- four subject few, yeah. Here, my dear father, breathed his last of, you know, mm-hmm. it was this one. And of course, so it's definitely very interesting, the Busoni connects with Chicago, and he writes the, the Contrapuntistica, Fantasia Contrapuntistica was encouraged 
weil Bernhard Zien und Wilhelm, Wilhelm Mittelschulte in Chicago. Did you know that? No, no. Busoni wrote an article that's called The Gothics in America. And he talks about Wilhelm Mittelschulte, Bernhard Zien, and Friedrich Stock. That was the oasis in America for him. Mm -hmm. when he came to Chicago, yeah. because he really had people he could talk with. Yeah, and this era of Chicago was even better. Yeah. Very, very, very. When I came in 29, yeah. there were only 10 orchestras, I told you, yeah. in America. When he was there, must have been much less than that, yeah. maybe six. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's really interesting. So, I said, if you're going to make any kind of a logical order out of the out of the fugue or bar, when I came to record it, I said, if you follow the idea that Bach had, and he was not about not to follow an idea of his predecessor, because had he ever begun to write the uh, Wiltsonberg Clavier if he hadn't had uh, Fischer, Karl Kasper Ferdinand Fischer, yeah. with his Ariadne Musica in 1715 mm -hmm. for his model? And not only does he use it as a model or an idea, but he also uses the theme. Some of, of the subjects. Yeah, some yeah. of the subjects. <laughs> yeah. Like the, the uh, meter for his uh, B-flat minor, which is maybe the most beautiful of it all, uh -huh. the prelude to the B-flat minor fugue. Mm -hmm. Straight, straight, yeah. verbatim. Yeah. And think what he did with it. Think how little Casper <laughs> Fischer did with when you think. What <laughs> Why should he? That was real. Okay. There was no, no plagiarism other than he took a, a meter, a pattern. But when you think what he did with it now. So, likewise, you would say, uh, as you come along, if that's what he did with Carl Kemp, why didn't he do it to Johann Fuchs? And I think he did mm -hmm. use the Gardus Ad Parnassum to a certain extent mm -hmm. as a norm. You wouldn't say it was more than a norm. Mm -hmm. Okay, if you do that and you contrast or you consider really what you have, uh -huh. what could be more logical after Bach has used, used it all up? You say, well, we have played it all for harpsichord. Supposing we add another harpsichord to it and supposing we make a cheek out of it, could there be anything more logical than making that the finale of his art of the few. So I did. I mean the cheek for two halves because not only is it normal to do, but that's when it proliferates the most in the way of small short values. There are triplets now in 16. Greatest evolution and the greatest density. Yeah. It, if you are interested in logic, you couldn't get more of it. Yeah. But it's not complete because Bach never wrote anything. We were, of course, frightfully wrong when we gave in to, to Khomeini and, and let the Shah go. He was bringing whatever light there was there by westernizing them is it, it's, it's the only way. This seems to be the only alternative. Well, you know, it's the, the Shah re was really the salvation of the Muslim world, mm -hmm. I, f I feel, at mm -hmm. this point. Now I think the only alternative is is to let them have their way. And yeah. but I mean, how, how do you? I I have felt for a long time that the the way to deal with the dilemma of Israel is to to offer them all the territory they they want here in America because we still have it to give away. Desert land like they have <laughs> that they can yeah. make uh, to flow with milk and honey. Mm -hmm. And, and we could have a, a much better, much easier situation. The fact that, of course, that they, they feel special about that country, but it's 2,000 years ago, and I can't see that it wouldn't be much happier, mm -hmm. a much better solution to mm -hmm. the mm -hmm. unsurmountable. The only, only way is if you could persuade the rest of the world. I, I wrote two letters, to Re one to Reagan and one to Andropov two months ago after Carl Sagan got out his big story, you probably saw that, about what the threat is for us uh, with the bomb. Yeah. And I feel very strong about that. As a matter of fact, what you have heard about my Leonardo Academy is, is really all a concern for man's future. That's what my Leonardo Academy is for. And uh, 
But when you say you doubted the veracity of the scriptures, or you, yeah. you continue with a kind of faith, not a dogmatic faith, but you couldn't have come from where you were through this entire life with so many interesting things, so many experiences without some kind of faith or sense of how life flows. Well, I remember Petrie saying once, we were walking onto the bridge by the zoological garden, that's the station, mm -hmm. the stop of the, of mm -hmm. this, the train that goes around Berlin. And he said to me, he said, my dear, the yellow danger that Spengler talks about is very real. They were talking about, of course, the fact that, that there is this huge growing number of Chinese, die gelbe Gefahr, it was, was called in German. They were talking about that uh, as, as a very real threat to the Western culture. Well, it would be if Nixon hadn't gone to China and uh, undone what they, they did in the way of isolating ourselves from, from the Chinese culture yes. and the Maoism that had taken over and so forth. But uh, what Nixon accomplished could never be sufficiently valued when he went there and made amends with mm -hmm. the Eastern world. Mm -hmm. And I was in a party with Mr. Lear and the top brass in the Air Force who were giving Sevierski finally a medal. You know, he was ostracized because they felt he had not done kosher things with his stock. Mm -hmm. Did you know that? No. With Sevierski during World War II. And they simply, great as his genius was in aviation, and much as they depended upon the prosecution of the war mm -hmm. as uh, they, uh, on air, for air power, mm -hmm. they simply ostracized him and uh, finally did amends with him. And I was there the night when it, they, they gave him the medal mm -hmm. in, in Washington because I was Mr. Lear's friend, I was mm -hmm. with his. Mm -hmm. And after, w after this uh, affair, we were in somebody's house, and I spoke up and said, I feel that we have to recognize China. And most of them being Republicans, they said to me, you walk home tonight. This was in 71, late 71, yeah. in 72. Nixon goes to China. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Well, I mean, it would took it would take Nixon or a Republican president to do this, to accomplish this for us. And this was one of the great services that Nixon ac accomplished for us. Mm -hmm. And it was no whim of his because evidently he had he had felt that for a long time it yeah. should be done yeah. naturally, just as we now should make friends at all costs with the Russians and try to help them in all ways we can rather than act as their dead enemy. Yeah. That's the only way we are going to save the world from a, 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 an atomic holocaust. And that I feel now at this point didn't exist when Petrie talked about the yellow danger. It didn't exist then, the atom bomb, mm -hmm. that we could have a tremendous set to with, if it ever came to a contest at that time mm -hmm. with any part of the world, but when the atom bomb came and the threat that has built up with the arsenal that we have now, there is no talk about in Earth anymore that offers you life. Life will vanish. The yeah. only thing that will survive, so do my friends in uh, geneticists at the university say, are perhaps a few ants that will inherit the Earth because they are resistant to radiation. Mm -hmm. But if they will not have anything to live on because it will also kill all greenery, mm -hmm. you see. Sure. It, would, it, would, it would make us like we were when the Earth started four billion and a half years ago. It will be utter desolation. Mm -hmm. What wouldn't you do to overcome that situation for humankind? To avoid that. To avoid that. Yeah. And I often say, well, they have said, better dead than red. No, I say better red than dead, because at least if you are in slavery for thousands of years, you have a chance. Mm -hmm. But the other way, there is no chance. 
that exercises me more than in, in the world. Yeah. And I went to a lecture, or a rather to a very interesting conference on energy. And the man who was there... Where was that? At the University of Southern California at the Annenberg Center. Walter Annenberg. One Walter Annenberg. Right. And they invited the man who was the head of MIT for many years. He was advisor to five successive presidents. Mm -hmm. Wiesner, Jerome Wiesner. Mm -hmm. And Jerome Wiesner started his, his key speech, which is ushered in the whole conference. He said, whatever we do to overcome the energy crisis we are in, if we don't first take care of the bomb and the population explosion, he said, would do us little good if we solved the energy anyway. problem. Mm -hmm. And this is what I feel about the whole thing. Mm -hmm. and that's what he said, and I could not have agreed more. Mm -hmm. And then they went off on to talk about energy uh, galore for two, three days, and I was at all, and the Annenbergs were there from eight o'clock in the morning and heard every single lecture dedicated people, very, very dedicated people, the Annenbergs. Mm -hmm. And you wonder how much is rubbing off on Regan. I'll give you the copy, copy of the letters I sent to Regan. Yeah. I think you'll really be interested. Yeah. He, he is a man of, of tremendous faith. It's all faith with him. Faith can go hand in hand with very strong character, but it's devastating when it comes to running the uh, whole fate of, of, of no. our globe. Well, it's Bruno Bettelheim wrote a book, The Informed Heart. Yeah. And you see. I've, I've heard, heard about that. It, so he, what he talked about was that kind of thing. Faith must have some reason mixed in with oh, it, some intelligence. Oh, it, it has, it has. If yeah. faith, faith, think what we have done in the name of the Christian faith in the way of tyranny and, yeah. and slaughter. You might, you might say the Holocaust in, in Europe was also done on faith. Yeah. What a horrendous, horrendous thing. No, and of course I mean the whole Russian experiment is a vast paradox when you consider what it set out to do to liberate the, the working man. He, he is in a greater straitjacket than he ever was under that. And when you think what the threat is with, with their war machinery and our war machinery to, to humankind, and, and both of them essentially mm -hmm. uh, talk about the liberation of the, of the man and man's great potential. Yeah. And well, there they are, threatening to, to do it to do away and leave it no alternative whatsoever for endless time, for, for eternity. Yeah. They really threatened to, to put an end to it for eternity. A few people could do it. Oh, yes. Right. Oh, yes, absolutely. A mistake could do it. Mm -hmm. Since all of it is automated, you know, more or less, depending upon electronic signals. Sure. Sure. And I cannot understand that we, 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 we tolerate that, that we tolerate being at the mercy of that. It's uh, the greatest idiocy ever. In a strange way, do you think it's maybe the, it's almost a fear of death you know, that brings about that kind of violence and death? I, I, I don't know if you could find a, ra a, a rationality mm -hmm. for it. Maybe not. I don't think you can find the rationality. I don't really think. Other than we have been painted into this impossible corner. You know, Niels Bohr was the great man in, in the atomic physics, you know. Mm -hmm. The yes. great man. Yeah, even, uh, as great as Einstein. Oh, absolutely. absolutely. I, think I mean, he was more directly, even more, uh, more directly involved in the development of atomic physics than Einstein was. Oh, I, I don't know. Einstein could never know. underestimate Einstein and fantastic vision that he had, ability to see, to think abstractly, you know, and what he was able mm -hmm. to bring about 
But uh, but as far as the direct thing, and also the making of the bomb was due to uh, Bohr. You know, he was in those Alamos. And when the Hiroshima happened, he couldn't wait to help humanity to overcome the threat. That's what he lived for the last years. Yeah. I saw him here in 31, in 61, the year before he died, he died also in 62, completely died. He was here and the speech that he gave was, the title was, What We Can Learn From Mathematics is, the answer was, that there is no room for inconsistencies. And when, when we see there is no way that we can do a, a way with the rationale of logic. And the logic tells us that we are going in a way with the world that could not be considered. That we could not bear. We cannot bear it. Yeah. We cannot bear this lack of the logical. Mm -hmm. And any computer will tell you that we oh, can't. Yeah. In a computer, you learn that uh, in nature, when you get down to that very low level, it's either on or off. Yeah, really. So it is as simple as that. But try and apply it. Mm -hmm. Is what Busoni's contribution is. He finishes that. Yeah, he does right. make a quadruple fugue. And Bach, of course, has now only three subjects, where he, he uses his own. He has yeah. main subject, and he has several, he has the other subject that goes into eight notes, mm -hmm. and then he picks up the, uh, the third subject, and uh, what Busoni does is pick up one of his other subjects and add to it, namely the chromatic one, which is incredibly forward, -looking. it could have been yeah. Prokofiev, couldn't it? Gets that, yeah, and this is what 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 Busoni, He really doesn't he bring, doesn't bring really new material. If you accept his introduction, namely, bam bi bam ba bam bi, you know that's the introduction to the contrapuntistica. He he braids that into it too. Is this on your recording of the Art of Lithium? Do you discuss that on the record notes? Oh, undoubtedly, I talk about it in my in my preface yeah. or my notes. Yeah. Okay. So it could be yeah. I, that that I must do because I felt that if I had anything to say, that this would be more different than yeah. anybody. Else. Yeah. But also interesting is that I play it twice as fast as uh, did Leonard, uh, Gustav, Gustav, Leonard. Gustav Leonard. Mine takes half the time. My Art of Lithium. You know why? Because I, I do it as Bach would do in La Breve. And if you don't do it in La Breve, it lasts twice as long. But that's especially with the long value ones. I need me the whole notes. And if, if you don't look upon it La Breve, it doesn't like in any other Bach you know. Because when he writes long values, like for instance the C sharp minor few, if that isn't La Breve, and when you get the eighth notes, if they don't if they're not really fluent, hmm. it couldn't be Bach. Mm -hmm. I mean, how could it be that others, that third subject, third subject in the, the C minor, sharp minor view, da dim bam pi da da dam, mm -hmm. how else would that f fall in with Bach's mm -hmm. gait? Mm -hmm. It wouldn't. Sometimes it comes out very ponderous. Da -dim. Yeah. That, he, that would be the way Bach up. At least never in other his, all his other music. Now I've recorded all his music. How could I play that different? In other words, only if you think with one bark with one foot in the grave could you have funereal temples like that. <laughs> this is what, what I feel, is really what I feel. Yeah. Yeah. Did you want to take a break? Yeah, because we must eat a little something. Oh.